Hey, I made a really weird music video for Wilbur Soot's band, Lovejoy. Let me tell you how that happened. If you know me, then you probably know me as a YouTuber, a goofy schmuck that makes comedy videos on the internet. But what you might not know is that before YouTuber ever became my job, I went to film school to be a director. Obviously, I'm incredibly lucky to have this job. But ever since I graduated, I noticed that when it's been too long since I've made something in the realm of film, I start to get what I would call the itch. It's that kind of itch that's hard to scratch, like it's in the middle of your back or something and you can't get it. And it's not a debilitating itch, but it gets worse as time goes on. That itch is to make a cool project. Something where you pour your whole brain into something. Your soul, your ball. And it comes out looking really good. So back in 2021, I made a music video for James Marriott's song, Gold. And at the beginning of this year, the itch came back. And it came back strong. So this year, I worked with Wilbur Soot and the very talented boys of Lovejoy to make a music video. Let me give you some backstory on how we got here. I've known Wilbur for many years, and he's been making content online for longer than I have. And two years ago, he launched a band that he founded with Joe Goldsmith titled Lovejoy. You got Wilbur as the lead vocalist and rhythm guitarist. Sweet Joe on lead guitar. Gorgeous Ash on the bass. And beautiful Mark? Well, he's the drummer. These guys aren't your typical YouTuber turned musician kind of crew either. They're making music that I personally enjoy myself, so it was exciting to have a chance to be able to work with them on a project like this. Transparently, I had been speaking to Wilbur since the summer of 2021 about doing a music video. But it was hard to shoot a music video in LA due to visa technicalities, you know, because Wilbur's a dirty Brit. However, in the fall of last year, Wilbur began sending me songs that they were working on for their new EP, Wake Up and It's Over. He sent me many songs. It's Golden Hour Somewhere, Call Me What You Like, Consequences. And while these songs sounded incredible and I was having many ideas for them, I didn't find the Song. The Golden Goose, one might say. It wasn't until February of 2023 that Wilbur sent me the newest song that they were working on, Portrait of a Blank Slate. All it took was for me to listen to the first few seconds and I was instantly impressed. He told me that much and now he's dead. This song hit me like a ton of bricks. You know how you might have that one song that you can listen to on like a long drive and you can just create all of these movies and storylines in your head? It was like that. Apologies to half the world that can only see thoughts as notions. This one's for the people that can see the apple red. Very soon after Wilbur had sent me the song, I called him up and I told him that I wanted Portrait. That was gonna be the music video I would direct. And then maybe that itch would go away because I was trying every cream from CVS and nothing was working. In creating the concept for this music video, Wilbur already sent me a series of music videos that he enjoyed the vibe. The feeling of. One of these was the music video for the song Adolescent Fluorescent by Arctic Monkeys. Which, by the way, is a really cool music video. It's clowns fighting mafia members. And in my search for inspiration or possibly procrastination, it led me down a pathway of watching a bunch of music videos. Eventually, I watched the music video for the song Brian Storm. And what really struck me about this music video was the interesting usage of old archival public domain footage to support what was being played in the song. I fell in love with this visual style. I thought it was so cool. But the problem with the Brian Storm music video for me was that it did not have enough weird old public domain footage. So I started out with a mock-up of a performance music video with old footage intercut between it, and it looked like this. She's an artist, paints across my chest, goes to parties, act like hotel guests, wake up on day. Now it's over, don't you know no one gets what they came in? This is the first mock-up I sent to Wilbur, and he responded, Oh my, I like it, but I want weirder. I want off-the-wall nonsense that still oozes cool. Okay, Wilbur. You're on, bitch. I continued my journey down the rabbit hole of old public domain footage, and I was initially just utilizing any interesting footage from the 20s to 40s. It could have been anything. Cartoons, TV shows, movies. But what really took me in a direction that shaped the entire music video is when I discovered medical educational videos from the early 20th century. These films were really visually compelling, and they would often use diagrams to explain their knowledge of how things worked at the time, such as the function of the eye, the heart, or the brain. And so I started becoming interested in the concept of what medicine and science was like back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. Because it was weird back then. They were doing weird shit. So the final idea I sent to Wilbur was as follows. A performance video set in the 1940s where a group of scientists are performing a secret experiment on the effect of music on a test subject, which inadvertently ends in catastrophe, all with intercutting weird and trippy public domain footage throughout. And what did Wilbur have to say about this idea? Hell ye. We are a go, ladies and gentlemen. And what we determined is that we would have one single day to shoot this music video. 
May 15th, just as Lovejoy is passing through LA on their tour. But that was good enough for me, because now we got a locked date. And with the shoot date solidified, I needed to build a crew. Before we continue talking about this very exciting but stressful experience of making this music video, let's talk about today's sponsor, which is BetterHelp. As I've mentioned in the past, I have ADHD, and since I work in an area that requires a lot of personal executive function, whether that be planning out an entire music video shoot or just hitting deadlines, it can be a weight on my own mental health. BetterHelp is the world's largest online therapy service, and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can get access to a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists that can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a couple questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether that's through text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If you find your therapist isn't right for you, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you'd expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist that is custom picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and at a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash tednivison. And also, there's a link in the description. Thank you guys for checking out the sponsor, and let's get back to the video. <laughs> What I eventually needed to do was figure out a way to end the music video because the end of this song is a really powerful part. So I wanted to have a crazy ending. I like crazy endings. The only two music videos I've made has had some sort of ridiculous ending. I decided in the end that we were gonna set that guy on fire. So the way that the story of the music video ends is that the music's effects become too much for the test subject to bear. He bursts into flames. We get absolute pandemonium as the band plays the last parts of the song. And then the lead scientist shuts down the experiment and he tells everyone to evacuate. So after all of this was done, I finally had a pre-visualization that I could send to Shane to get an idea of how I wanted the music video to look. And now, folks, it was time to make it a reality. Right now, I'm about to leave for the location scout of this music video. You show up there with the DP, sometimes the production designer and the producer of the film. So yeah, I'm gonna leave for that and I'm gonna take you guys with me. I drove to the location that we had planned for the shoot. It was in a warehouse in the Arts District in Los Angeles. And I'm sure they make almost all of their money off of music videos because it's not exactly the most unique thing to be shooting a music video in a warehouse in Los Angeles. And that was where we met many of the folks on the team in person. We've got Will, the executive producer, Brian, the line producer, Connor, the assistant director, Annie, the production designer, and finally Shane, the director of photography. All all of these people had a stake in seeing the location in person and really getting an understanding of the space that we were working with. That way we can show up in person on shoot day with a really solid understanding of how everything was going to work from the moment that we show up on set. So with the location seen and understood, the next step was for me to cast the scientists. It took me a little bit, but I think I found my final eight actors, so they all just look like they would really work for this sort of medical and also 1940s-esque world. I'm very excited for them to be in the scientist outfits and everything and have this like really come together. I'm getting jazz. Now for the test subject, I already knew who would be playing that test subject. And that would be none other than Will Neff. If you don't know who Will Neff is, he's a Twitch streamer. He's an incredibly funny individual. One of the nicest people I know. And I also knew that he would do a kick-ass job. And since I decided I wanted a test subject to be subjected to unknown horrors, I wanted Will to be that person. And now one of the final things I had to do before we were pretty much ready to shoot this music video was... <laughs> Shane has seen the previs multiple times over at this point. And he's probably got one of the hardest jobs on the entire shoot at this point. Because he's got to take my previs, which is an insane <laughs> collection of images and sound, with just an unrealistic amount of dreams embedded in it, and basically turn it into a shot list that is realistic. Imagine a director is like a little kid at a candy store, and he says, I want a lollipop, I want a nerd's rope, and I want 500 boxes of sweet tarts. And at this point, the DP is there to say, well, that, okay, well, now that doesn't seem very realistic. How about one box of sweet tarts? And I basically have to go, well, yeah, I guess. I spoke with Shane, the DP. Basically, the amount of shots that we have for this music video is astronomical. So we went through the shot list and we're trying to combine shots into each other in order to save time. A lot of the reason for this is because we have five separate dolly track setups. Which require physical metal track to be laid down, which can take a while. So what we try to do is either cut shots that aren't totally necessary for the music video or take shots that we were originally going to get in a certain way and then combine them into shots like on the dolly or something like that. Yeah, it's it's a little it's a little stressful because a lot of trust has been placed in me by Wilbur and Lovejoy to make a really good music video. And maybe all of my worry right now is unfounded, but man, it is going to be a stressful day. Either way, everything was done that could be done. So I had to get some sleep and wake up to do one of the biggest budget productions that I had ever done. Today we are on our way to the music video shoot for Lovejoy for their song Portrait of a Blank Slate. This is this sounds insane. This sounds crazy. 
You suck. <laughs> Did you want a bigger reaction? I'm sure it's good. Like, uh, okay. okay. So, it sounds like you're my dad talking about my upcoming science project. Oh yeah, son, I'm sure it's gonna be really good. A lot of butterflies in the stomach right now. Very oh. nervous. But yeah, I mean, this is a great, this is great. And also this traffic is amazing. When I got to the shoot, many of the crew had already arrived and was setting up, and we basically had two hours to set up before it was time for the first shot. We just got here. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I think things are moving. We got the actors getting into their hair and makeup and their costume. First shot's at 10.30 a.m., so we've got... We're on schedule. We're on schedule. This is the first time I was seeing this production design in person, so I was pumped to see all this science gear being loaded off the truck. This is the production design right here. This is the production design truck. Got all the stuff that's going to make up the lab that the scientists are working from. We've got a lot of um, <laughs> just old-looking stuff here. Blackboard, because they didn't have whiteboards back then. The chalkboard. In the 40s. What? Chalkboard. You try to start a problem. <laughs> At the same time, the actors playing the scientists all had arrived, and they began to work with wardrobe to get into costume, and hair and makeup to look like they're actually from the early 20th century. Basically, I spent this time kind of running around everywhere. So the reason why I'm wearing a black shirt right now yeah. is because I'm sweating big time. Oh. You can still see it. What? Yeah. You're just trying to make me feel bad. <laughs> I was so excited to be on this set, I forgot to take off my backpack for like an hour when I was there. So you can kind of just see me walking around with this backpack on and I, ju I just don't need to have it on anymore. I look like a high schooler that wandered into the set. I don't know why I did that. Right now it's 9.37, we're still setting up. They're, they're hanging stuff up there on the lights right now. The first shot is the intro shot of Skip explaining what the experiment is diegetically in the world. That's a film term. And at 10 a.m. the band showed up for the first time to the set. Uh, a cheeky little British boy <laughs> who arrived. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Will. And the rest of the band is here. They're all very hungry. Then I walked them over to the wardrobe department and got them set up with the costume designer who was going to take care of getting them in their little, little uh, 40s gear. Then I had other things I needed to do, so I walked off to do more director things. And after a bit, we were finally ready to set up for our first shot. Now, it was somewhat a race against time, trying to get the best shots possible while also keeping on schedule. Okay. We got the first shot. Nice to meet you. I'm the one self emulating. <laughs> no, when I told Wilbur that we wanted full penetration, he was hesitant. <laughs> and he was like, full penetration of like the music in people's souls, right? And I was like, well, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Once the production set up, we started to get shots of Will Neff as the test subject. Then there's going to be a thing where someone's going to be like grabbing your eye and going like that. Because it takes so much time for lighting and camera to move and set up cameras in different scenarios, we would shoot all of the shots of Will Neff from the front and then all of the shots of the scientists and then all of the shots of the band in different portions of the day. That's usually the most effective usage of time. Will Neff gave most of his performance from the front right here at the beginning. And Will was an absolute trooper. What's up, chat? It's Will Neff. I'm gonna be your pilot today. Today, we're shooting full penetration, which is demanding on an actor, to say the least. Because pretending to have a mental and physical reaction to music by like tensing up your body and shaking was understandably exhausting for him. He was doing this for multiple minutes on end, and we were doing multiple shots in a row. And so shout out to Will Neff because most of the sweat that you saw on him was real. From there, we moved on to getting shots of the scientists working on their machines, taking data of the test subject's reaction. One of the things that I did as the director, I gave the scientists a rundown of the entire context of the music video and that the scientists' state of mind kind of progressed throughout as well. At the beginning, they're just doing their work. They don't know anything about how the experiment is going to go. And then at the end, when the test subject has lit on fire, they are going to be understandably panic. I organized these stages into code words, so at the beginning that was act one, and when the patient was on fire that was finale. That way I could yell it out to the actors so they could understand that there was a change happening that I was looking for. However, one thing that I did not consider was that because the scientists were wearing ear protection, that meant that they quite literally could not hear what I was saying when they had them on. Come again, Skip! Come again, Skip! Skip, Skip come up fast! Come up fast! Check on him! Is he okay? Don't worry about it. This scientist stuff took a while and I was starting to get a bit concerned. Let's get a time check. What time is it? It's 1 p.m. This scientist stuff is taking a while and I'm nervous, but I keep being told that it's gonna work out. I hope it does. But we're covering a lot of stuff with various shots, like we're covering a lot of different angles. I'm sweating. I'm just, I'm literally dripping. I can feel beads of sweat dripping off of my clothing. And I was getting a bit concerned because we were gonna have to stop for lunch and continue doing the scientist stuff after. Which, by the way, you have to stop for lunch. The crew needs to eat. If you're trying to be a director, don't ever try to get people to skip lunch, please. But at this point, we were a bit behind schedule, leading me to become a bit concerned about getting everything that we needed for the band. But despite the scheduling worries, the footage was coming out beautiful, and the performances from Will and the scientists 
Phenomenal. I could not have asked for a better group of actors in this video. After finishing up the scientist shots, we moved on to getting Lovejoy shots in the video. What was great about directing this portion of the video was that I didn't really need to do much in terms of direction for the Lovejoy boys. After all, they've been a band for a while now, and they know what they're doing when it comes to performing. I think the only thing I really spoke about was specific directions in terms of where they'd be on stage, and sort of giving some guidance on what level of intensity I was looking for based on where we were at the timeline of the video. We did a lot of takes with these boys. We probably played Portrait of a Blank Slate maybe upwards of 20 times, but they just kept going. They were just chugging along. Should I go less crazy? I think you're doing a good job. I feel like I'm a bit of a wacky, wavable, inflatable, I want to do man. for the part. An absolute delight to work with. Really. We utilized the dolly for these shots of Lovejoy as well, and Shane would move around and try his best to get good coverage of all of the band playing. And then at certain points, he would go handheld to shoot portions of their performance as well. We tried to get as much coverage of the band as possible, and I think despite my worries, we were able to do so. All there was to do was to get one final shot of the head scientist. Last shot, a martini shot with good old Skip. That's right, here, come on in here. A handheld shot of him running to a knife switch and shutting down the entire experiment. And just like that, maybe with like four minutes before we had a hard out for the shoot, meaning that we just straight up had to stop. We were able to wrap the shoot. Okay, that's a wrap on Portrait of a Blank Slate, everybody! I was overjoyed. Exhausted, but overjoyed. I'm pretty sure my brain had been running on full power for maybe 12 hours straight, and then it was over, and we had completed shooting the video. It's wild because in hindsight, it just flew by, even though we were working for like 12 hours straight. All there really was left to do was to edit the video, and if you're watching this video now, then that means that it's out. So you should go watch it. We're wrapped. I love Joy. Portrait of a Blank Slate. So protectable. So protectable.